It's good to see you. Thanks for your time. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. My wife sent me a text message this morning, and I'll quote it. It says, apparently Louis Theroux has listed all the stupid questions that journalists have asked him over the years. Any hints before we start? Um, you know, I don't know that I've done that. I do know that I get asked the same questions quite a lot, uh, but uh, that's fine. I, a, a big one is, um, are you really like that, or are you doing a persona? Is it an act? Is it an act? That's quite a common one. I'll, I'll assume it's not an act. You um, can be the judge by the end of the interview. <laughs> yes. Well, you've been making films outside the UK for something like 15 years. What is it that's drawn you back there this time? Uh, well, there's a simple uh, answer to that, which is that um, my wife and I had a baby, <laughs> and um, we agreed that it was time that I pitched in on the home front a bit more. We've got three kids, but with a, somehow the third one, we were outnumbered, and... Um, yeah, part of the deal was I would be around. and But also, I think after doing shows abroad, and especially in America for so long, it felt like time uh, to do UK stories. That's right. Early on, there were, there were many stories about the weird and wacky porn stars, mm -hmm. neo-Nazis. Are you now looking for more accessible characters? They're more about a kind of a relatable form of dysfunctionality or people who who are involved with choices that aren't of their own making, medical stories, uh, families grappling with dementia, and in this, uh, one of the more, more recent ones, um, alcohol abuse. The alcohol abuse film involves severe cases. Uh, it's quite sad, actually. Very severe. It's the absolute, I mean, it's beyond just being alcoholic to, to the point where it's um, self, absolutely self-annihilating oblivion drinking. How are you doing, Joe? Do you remember me? Oh, Louis. How's it going? Hello. How's it going? It's, uh, no, well, not well, obviously. Yeah, you're looking like you're a bit fragile. Had a few drinks? Yeah. You went on a bit of a bender from what I can hear. Yeah, really bad, bad, eh? You OK? Yeah. What have you been drinking? OK. Did you find it was literally a, a sobering experience for you? Did it make you think about how much you drink? Um, you know, OK, so in all honesty, one of the reasons I did it was because um, I think I drink a little too much, as, you know, probably many people do. And I thought it would be... You know, a lot of the things I... the stories I do, that I have some sort of a kind of relationship with the subject, even if it's a glancing relationship, there's some part of me that's either intrigued in a personal way. I mean, I did a story about swingers. Listen, I'm not a swinger, but I have that natural curiosity of what life would be like if you kind of changed the rules in your relationship. So with the drinking, the surprising thing was once I got into the uh, subject, I realized, wow, I am not um, anywhere near this level of losing control. Having said that, it made me think more about cutting down. I, dis I discovered that if you take two days, because I'll have a couple of glasses a night, right? I'm one of those people. Mm. And when we say couple, you know, that could be four or five. But um, I I now a couple of nights a week, I take off. Apparently, if you do that, say, mm. you know, Monday, Tuesday, that can make a big difference to your health. Now, you've had a long career, 20-odd um, years at least. What is the moment that stands out the most for you in terms of it shocked you to your core and you did not quite feel prepared for it? I, I often think back to um, a story I did in, in Miami about the main jail where um, they had a... Uh, in the maximum security units of the main jail there was a culture of, of fighting and gladiatorial combat. And it felt like something so extreme, so brutal. By some quirk of fate, if I was sent into this cell, You'd see me and presumably you would know that I was not cut out to fight. No, you go out to fight. I'm saying the whole cell might beat you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The whole cell might beat you. Why? Shit, that's the code. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You're going to have to figure out why. For that to be happening in modern day America, that, um, that inmates are, are, are permitted to just more or less routinely and ritually beat each other up to a pulp. That felt absolutely beyond belief. You're a British citizen and an American citizen, which makes you 
I think, well qualified to talk about two current issues. The first is Brexit. Mm -hmm. Did you see that coming? I didn't really see it coming, no. But, you know, I think I... I always think that there is a kind of silent majority. There's a phenomenon called the shy Tory, the sort of the right-leaning voter who's a bit bashful about expressing candidly his or her opinions. So it didn't massively surprise me. I mean, I think there's a feeling of uh, almost, you know, a kind of grassroots feeling of being betrayed by the elites in some way, and the sense that the system is working for itself and not for the people at the bottom. Now, I think the same thing is behind Trump, to be honest with you. I think a lot of people feel let down by the whole sort of um, Republican and Democrat uh, political system, and they see Trump as, for all his flaws, a breath of fresh air. Is it conceivable that Trump could win? I think he could win, absolutely. And I think he could win because I think there's, a, there's Trump supporters out there who, who aren't even um, revealing themselves as such. So, yeah, and for me, that's a scary prospect because I think he'd be a disastrous president. If you were to make a film in Australia, have you ever thought about doing that and what, what would it be? I have thought about it quite a bit over the years. I think, um, you know, I'm interested in s the worlds that are somehow alien to me. And so I look about Melbourne, where we are now, and I, I, I'm, I'm seeing something that almost feels quite familiar, actually. It seems almost like a European city, um, very cultured, very livable. I'm more intrigued by the wilder and woollier side of Australia. I'd like to get into the outback. I'm curious about um, the relationship between um, the races here and especially conditions that the indigenous community is living in. Well, it's good to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.